Panthers at the Falcons. We have a bet in this one. Uh, Brad is uh, interested in one of the sides. Steven, um, I'm looking here at a Panthers team that decided to bench Sam Darnold. This past week, PJ Tucker, had he gone in, I mean, PJ Tucker, oh boy, the basketball is on my mind, uh, go, yeah. going on here. Um, if, yeah. if, 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 the if the XFL if, disrespect will not be tolerated on this podcast, uh, sir, listen, PJ, <laughs> PJ, here's the PJ Tucker had a big game last night, is the thing. PJ Tucker had two games in a row where he scored nothing, and then last night scored 15 points out of nowhere. Where yeah. I'm just kind of like, PJ, I got PJ Tucker uh, hey, on, on PJ, the PJ Walker, baby. Let's PJ go. Walker. Um, <laughs> PJ Walker comes in. He doesn't do any better, so doesn't give them out to keep Sam Darnold benched, and so they immediately have to say Sam Darnold's our quarterback. So he will be starting for the Panthers as three-point road underdogs to the Atlanta Falcons, who got Kyle Pitts involved in a massive way last week to the tune of 167 yards receiving for him, and it was just a huge, huge day for the rookie Ridley back in the lineup. So it is a, uh, you know, a Falcons team that's as good as maybe they were going to be anytime, uh, anytime recently. So Steven, I'll start with you because Brad's the one that's actually got a, a play on this one. What's your thoughts here? Panthers and Falcons. I do think that the, uh, the line is a bit of an overreaction, but um, I'm, <laughs> it's hard for me to pull the trigger on Sam Darnold uh, bouncing back. I think this is the buy low spot for the Carolina Panthers. It just, it's going to take faith that Sam Darnold figures it out and, and, and comes back to what we saw earlier in the year because the Falcons defense is still very beatable. And then on the other side, I think the Falcons offensive line is vulnerable in this game against a Panthers pass rush that was pretty strong I mean Brad pointed this out last week he wasn't wrong right I mean the, the huge mismatch in that game against the Giants was the Panthers pass rush and it was very effective against Daniel Jones it was just Sam Darnold was a train wreck so um it, it's Panthers are nothing for me in this game Brad, uh, you got the uh the look here at the Panthers and you know you take a look Panthers offense has been has been brutal. 30th overall DVOA, 31st overall pro football focus and basically every single adjusted met uh, every single advanced metric that we could look at, they are in the bottom, let's call it 8 in the league, most likely in the bottom 5 of the league. But fortunately, a remedy for that is getting the Falcons defense, which is also in the defensive metric side of the ball, is in the bottom two, three, four in the league and pretty much every single thing that we look at and everything that we consider important. So in the battle of uh, weaknesses, you seem to be leaning towards the uh, Panthers offense winning out here. Yeah, so I think I think there's two things. One is, you know, it is the little the kind of the buy low on the Panthers. Like the, the offense is obviously bad, but they went mm. two for 15 on third down last week, right? Like that's no, no one's going to be that bad, you mm. know, three, three weeks in a row kind of thing. Mm. Um, so we've got to expect some improvement. And then as, as Steven said, the defense is still very good, right? That, that game was five, three at the half. And then, you know, because, because the Panthers just kept going three and out, they got worn down late um, and, and the Giants started scoring points. But, as I say, I don't think we can expect them to be two out of 15 bad again, especially against this 30th ranked um, defensive DOA team in the Falcons. Um, the other thing I would say home field in division is is probably a point, maybe even less for this Falcons team. So we've got to say they're clearly better uh, than the Panthers. And again, we're, we're buying low on the Panthers. We're, we're also trying to sell high on these Falcons. Um, you know, people are saying, oh, they're a, they're a player away from a four game win streak. Well, they, they've lost to the, the football team. They've, they've beaten the Jets in London by, by a score. They've beaten the Giants by three points. Um, and they actually lost the stats in that game. And then last week, they beat the Dolphins, another terrible team. I mean, that's four terrible teams. Um, and they, they lost the stats in that game as well. They had a, um, they had a 44% success rate, Dolphins 53%, Falcons 34% first down rate, Dolphins 38%. So they, they probably shouldn't have won that game against the Dolphins, but Tua was like chess passing interceptions. Um, so to me, I, I think you've, you've got two bad teams, but to me, this, this game should be lined up maybe minus one and a half, minus two for the Falcons. Um, and I think getting the, getting the, the full three is quite valuable. 
Yeah, I kind of look at this game as a coin flip as far as what I think of these two teams. I don't think that these teams, there's a real discernible difference in what you're putting on the field. And with the lack of home field advantage in the NFL this year, and certainly the lack of home field advantage in Atlanta, um, you know, if you're going to give me a full field goal with one of the two teams that are going to be on the field, I'm probably going to take the three points pretty much every single time. Because, again, if I don't see any discernible difference at all between the teams, then give me the field goal. I'm going to take it. You're probably sitting there going, well, Matt, you just talked about uh, Tua having to deal with the rumors of Deshaun Watson. Well, what about Sam Darnold? And, yes, there was all of that going on as well. That being said, Sam Darnold is used, is used to not being wanted. So I'm not really worried about him and his feelings and all of that. The fans have hated him in New Jersey. They ship him out of town. All of a sudden, like, I'm not really worried about that. I think he's had to deal with all that for a few years now. So um, him not being wanted or him being, you know, uh, the rumors of trades and things like that. I, I'm not too worried about Sam Darnold. He's been there, done that. And uh, that that is just something that he's had to deal with since he's been in the league. So uh, I'm with you. Um, I'm with you, Brad. If you're going to give me a field goal, in a game where I think the teams are pretty much the same, then I'll take the field goal pretty much every single time.